Welcome to the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast, where we discuss relevant information concerning the cybersecurity workforce, business development, and best practices made possible by CMIS. Learn more at CMIS.net. And for a list of authorized publications, visit DwayneHart.com. And now, here's your host, Dwayne Hart. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast session. Um, about... About a couple of weeks ago, uh, I actually had the opportunity to attend a conference. And in that conference, I was noticing that much of the vendors was demonstrating products that was to, or uh, pretty much was supposed to improve cybersecurity. And then I started to look around and I saw these different terms such as innovation, artificial intelligence, and business transformation. And, and you know, the premise of the entire conference was to at least make notice that cybersecurity needed to be upgraded. Uh, and that was vendors that had different, different kind of tools that I have never seen before. And uh, most of those tools were set to give you a dashboard view of metrics and so that uh, an individual could see exactly how cybersecurity was operating and some of, the, some of the proactive defenses measures you could take to protect your environment by using these applications and uh, tools. So today is dedicated to much of what I have spoken about, but also to, to discuss transferring digital modernization into the cybersecurity mode of thinking. And digital modernization itself is, uh, is a very strong mythology that is in place now. And the cybersecurity mode of thinking is the last state, is the end state of how cybersecurity should operate. And when you start to modernize an environment, this is how uh, an organization should be thinking. All right. How can I transfer this into the cybersecurity mode of thinking? In my book, The Cybersecurity Mindset, the last chapter is called The Cybersecurity Mode of Thinking. And in that chapter itself, it's, it goes and brings into the existence of a lot of information that I am discussing in, in this podcast session. So, so let's talk about some of the goals and outcomes. Very simple. The first one, we're going to define digital modernization and secondly, we're going to discuss some of the objectives for dig digital modernization. Then, you know, we can't leave here without talking about the cybersecurity relationship. Then we want to look at some of the key challenges uh, that are abreast of digital modernization and then roll into the current state and then just uh, look at some best practices. Is that how can an organization or you as a cybersecurity professional uh, use some of the best practices to engage yourself into digital monetization. All right. So, so digital monetization is, is really about uh, onboarding brand new technologies because as the cybersecurity industry begins to mature, there is a need to have better technologies. And these technologies has to support technology investments because companies – do not want to spend a lot of money trying to bring on different technologies if these technologies are not going to solve their needs. Part of these, part of the other area too is upgrades. If you notice that there are certain systems that are still operating now that were built back in the 1970s. So these systems has to go to a digital monetization phase or pretty much they're going to have to be phased out. And a lot of organizations are trying to find ways to be optimized, to work leaner, and to do things in a rapid rate. And this is where digital monetization comes to surface. Uh, some of the other factors, too, is that um, it uses data to determine best investments. So based on different trend analysis, based on different um, systems that were used in the past, Organization uses digital monetization uh, strategies to try to improve the way they do business and to see what type of technologies they need to bring on board. 
and some of the other areas of discussion is, is that digital monetization is about taking your business to the next level. There's a term called uh, business transformation. And business transformation is, as I just stated, it is that you want to take your business to the next level. But to take that business to the next level, organizations have to modernize their technologies. So that means that if a company wants to onboard 2 million customers within the next year, their infrastructure has to be upgraded. And this is where digital monetization comes to surface. But when you modernize, you're going to have to uh, have system that can work, work at a rapid rate. And you may have to look at artificial intelligence and to bring those type of services on board of, as well. Here are some objectives for digital monetizations. Technology improvement and shared services. If you think about we are in a society now where organizations have to share information. And if you're going to share information with different vendors and different entities, an organization has to find ways to improve their shared services. So that means that two organizations has to come up with ways to share that information, but also, too, the information has to be protected. And this is where shared services come to play into existence of digital monetization. Workforce development. So you cannot channel your organization through digital monetization without looking at your workforce because there are critical skill sets that are required to manage the new technologies. So before an organization decides to uh, modernize and to transform, the first object, you know, one of the objectives is to go and look at the workforce, look at the type of skills you need to bring on board. All right. Uh, one of the other factors is you want to simplify cybersecurity. I have stated in part, you know, partly in some of the other podcast sessions, is that cybersecurity can be simple. And digital monetization is there to help simplify cybersecurity. And to simplify it means that maybe you need to bring on some artificial intelligent platforms because the human eye can only interpret so much information. If you have a million transactions and if you're starting to escalate up to two million transactions, well, you need something that can process that data at a rapid rate. And this is where artificial intelligence comes to surface. And this is one of the objectives of digital monetization too, is to simplify cybersecurity. One of the other factor that comes into play is design thinking. It's, it's pretty much you take a people-centric approach to come up with the new ways of addressing a problem, okay? So, so with digital monetization, you are always in the phase of design thinking because you have to look at people and also, too, you need to look at the technology that you have. And you have to, to design something that would operate for a particular environment, okay? So... So with that said, when you start to design things and you really look at the whole scheme of digital monetization, now comes the idea of cybersecurity. So let's talk about the functionality of cybersecurity and digital monetization. Well, you know, the mode of thinking correlates to the adaptive mindset. What I mean by the adaptive mindset is that organization has to be resilient and organization is going through changes. So part of that mode of thinking is that when you decide to modernize, all right, uh, you know, you have to have that adaptive mindset and knowing that when you modernize the environment, there are going to be some changes that occur and they're going to affect cybersecurity. And an organization has to be resilient. Now, to become resilient means that you got to have certain technologies in place. People have to understand their role assignments and you need skill sets that actually needs to be on board so that you can make cybersecurity operate. Innovation means that you're trying to find some brand new ways to to operate cyber cybersecurity. Some of the old legacy processes that we use has to be um, removed. 
They are systems that were built back in the 1970s. You cannot depend on those systems today because they are not cybersecurity ready. All right. The cloud. The cloud brings into the existence of a lot of digital modernization uh, techniques because organizations now are seeing that when you transfer it to the cloud, uh, you know, it makes it very easy for the organization too because, because you're not really – holding a lot of uh, systems, software, and you don't hold a data center. You just purchase a subscription so that you can use that data center. And part of digital modernization is saying, okay, it's only certain times of the year that, that my organization have used for 100 servers, and that's during Christmas season. So let's transfer it to the cloud, and we can buy a subscription and use a certain amount of servers for that particular period, and then when the Christmas is over with, we can downscale. And this is where the cloud comes to surface and to help cybersecurity and digital monetization. Automation is, is at the key here. Uh, artificial intelligence is growing. You know, having that electronic brain in place because there's so much data out there that, that actually needs to be processed. And to go and to process that data requires automation. If you work in a vulnerability management platform and you have 2 million rows of vulnerabilities, you need to automate that data. And this is where digital monetization comes to uh, surface. Some of the other methods um, talked, talked about is that create advanced protection. So that means that if you mature your programs and start to move into a threat intelligence platform that will take data feeds from 15 or 20 different sources and to correlate that data and to go give you an actionable, actionable view of that data, you can actually have better insight to protecting your environment because today's organization is about rapid information and being able to respond before hackers do, okay? Because this whole entire scheme of cybersecurity is to outsmart hackers, all right? This is where the hackers hack come to surface. Um, in the cybersecurity mindset, there's there's a piece that was written on, on wearing the hackers hat. Some of the other errors here is that the cybersecurity f functionality is that you want to reduce risk. Okay, this is this is at the core here as well. We are in a business to reduce risk, and the only way that you can reduce risk is to go and think about the way you way you use these different type of technologies, looking at your people, and making sure that they have the particular skill set to operate in cybersecurity, and also to looking at your processes, looking at the fact that that if a system is failing, then how can you modernize things in a way, you know, to keep that system availability up at least by 99%, all right? So these are some great factors as they relate to cybersecurity. I've, I've been around for, for a bit and working in cybersecurity, and I noticed that with digital monetization, there are some key challenges. So let's talk about some of these challenges. Uh, you know, that's a slow pace of migration to the cloud. There are still some companies that 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 have not taken on board cloud. Um, you know, that was a um, that was a uh, survey taken, and it stated that the government accountability to offer reports only eleven percent of federal agents are currently on the cloud. Okay, so so the cloud itself is still kind of growing. All right, um, you know, that's a um, Key challenges for digital monetization. That's technical depth out there refers to the amount of outdated code or unsupported platforms. This is talking about those legacy systems that are still in existence. Legacy business processes, using paper, massive amount of time loss, and more important errors. All right. Um, I know that organizations like the Veterans Administration is moving away from uh, veterans paper health records and want to do it through the electronic method and taking those electronic uh, health records and being able to share with um, personal 
um, uh, doctors, okay, that that some of these veteran majors have, which is a great move because with paper, you know, you think about the errors you get. Think about paper being lost. Think about privacy. Someone has a folder with patient information and they make a mistake and, and leave it on the bus or something like that, and it has their Social Security number. Okay, those are some of the things that that – that poses key, key challenges. Some of the uh, other things that are posing challenges too is that security and perception, no cloud, thinking physical data centers where engineers can physically touch their server are more secure than cloud security. So, so what this states is that if you have a data center, if you can physically touch that server, you are more secure than having it up in the cloud. All I like to say is that that uh, that could be true in so many ways, but but the cloud makes it much more easier to manage um, manage uh, systems, especially in a high tempo environment. Now, I'm not here to say that you should be 100 percent cloud, but maybe certain portions of an enterprise should actually go cloud. Um, if you think about if you got 100 servers in the data centers and you really don't use 50 of those. But those other fifty are only used at certain at certain time of the year. Then maybe you need to downsize. Maybe you need to modernize and um, go to virtualization. Then it then again maybe it's great to go to the cloud because you know you don't you don't you don't have to worry about all the software upgrades. Some of the other factor too, budget budget constraints. Some organizations do not have a large budget to be. Um, going through a digital monetization period, uh, overly complex or rigid legacy security structure, sec- security infrastructure. Yeah. You know, where you have all these firewalls, switches and routers that you just don't use. Uh, and people want to lean onto those because they feel it costs a little bit more money just to upgrade. But also too, are you getting the level of service that you need to get out of those pieces of equipment? Okay. Uh, some of the other thing is lack of available, appropriately skilled cybersecurity personnel. Yes, because as you transition through the digital monetization, people people have to be trained, and if and if people are not trained, then then they can't do their jobs. All right. And uh, speaking of people, speaking of digital monetization itself, uh, some of the other things is that there is a current state of digital monetization today. Uh, if we think about in, in 2020 and now up until 2021, COVID-19 surfaced. And a lot of remote workers had to be uh, placed. All right. So organization has to go to an area and start to state, okay, all right, we need to modernize because we have workers that are going to be working at home now. All right. And with these remote workers, there needs to be a cybersecurity pipeline put in place because some organization was was not used to having an abundance of remote workers. Um, you know, the shared services now, you know, the CDC has a public health surveillance program, which is which is designed to improved shared service with their 3,000 uh, vendors, all right? That is a form of digital monetization itself because with 3,000 uh, vendors and healthcare facilities, everybody has to be on the same page when they share data. So through a digital monetization uh, phase, both of those are trying to determine, okay, how can we share data, all right? Now, it goes beyond just saying that uh, we're sharing the information, but also, too, the data has to be the same because if you're sharing data data from point A to point B, when that data transferred from point A to point B, it should look the same, all right? You know, this is where, this is where um, terms such as operability comes to play, all right? And one of the other factors, too, is that how – how are you going to protect the data? Because the data has to have the same protection standard from both ends if you're transferring information from point A to point B, all right? 
And and as of now, there's a lot of shared service in place, and a lot of organizations are pretty pretty much moving forward with digital monetization and making sure that shared services is, is in place as well. Um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Yes, we're in a state now where artificial intelligence is coming to surface. Uh, based on these conferences that I've been to, I've seen a lot of artificial intelligence platforms and a lot of machine learning that is going on. Um, there's another term called quantum um, crypt- cryptography is coming out. Um, you know, there are some incentives. There are some, some, some changes that are happening with digital monetization that, that's going to really vehicle the cybersecurity industry. One of the one of the best reads that I had, and I read it really great, was the DOD monetization plan that was published in 2019. If you have the opportunity of searching on the web, and if you can go out there and find this um, document, read it. Because it gives you insight to digital monetization and how the Department of Defense has has taken on digital monetization and, and tried to transition the organization to be much much leaner but also to to be more rapid in processing data uh, to actually building a a a common unified picture okay and you know the whole premise of this DOD monetization 2019 was to support the warfighter okay so so if you have the opportunity Go and um, search the DOD modernization plan that was written in, written in um, 2019. All right, now, uh, there are some best practices. If you are deciding to transition into digital modernization, number one, think ahead. In my book, Cybersecurity Mindset, I always, um, you know, I wrote a piece on thinking ahead, all right? It's that prior to you trying to transition to digital monetization, you know, you take a look at your uh, tools, you know, you take a look at your software programs, you know, you take a look at your people and make a decision about the way that you should go forward. Because some of these tools and some of the processes and some of the parts of digital monetization may not work for your organization. Formalize a team of professionals. Every person that is involved that has some type of input to digital monetization should be uh, involved in talking. You cannot take a cybersecurity platform and just depend on top level management. You know, your subject matter experts are very important because those are the people that put their hands on the equipment every day because those are the people that understand all the problem. And also too, you can talk to your vendors, think out cybersecurity. Okay. Now when you think out cyber cybersecurity, all right, there are some terms to use. One of them is called layered, it's called layered security. When you think about layered security, it is all the different platforms that you have in place to protect your environment. It can be network security, it can be your host based security, it can be your database security. All right. Those are your platform because what happens is that you are protecting the divide. You are protecting your environment at different levels, okay? Okay, and you have more than one way of protecting that environment, which is where layers, layer security comes to surface. Now, now there's another term called defense in depth. Now, this is thinking security out. If you are, if you take um, something such as an email system, right? If you look at Defense in depth, then, first thing is you got to have a policy. Second thing is you got to make sure that your control is in place. Uh, third thing is that you got to train your users. The fourth piece is that you have to have an encryption channel in place. You know, and it could go on and on and on, but that is defense in depth for you. Uh, some of the other factors is you want to use data from incident response, vulnerability management, or audits. This is going to tell you exactly your trend analysis and give you metrics about what's been going wrong with your environment. You know, the government has these uh, OIG inspections every year that actually gives them actual data on what they stand with the audits every year. If you look at your incident response um, activities and all the events that go on and look at the number of 
uh, vulnerabilities that you have on your enterprise on on an annual basis, you can use that as some best practice to uh, come up with metrics and let you know that that your current vulnerability program may just need to roll into more automation. Maybe you need a new tool, okay? Uh, some of the other thing is that before you buy a tool, you should check it out and to test it for about 30 days first, okay? Because, I, you know, it sounds good to bring on some brand new tools, but certain tools are only good for certain environments. But you have to take these tools through a test bed first because you don't want to spend $5 million on a brand new tool and then find out that, that it doesn't work on your environment because a lot of environments have, have uh, issues with their um, uh, active directory. Maybe, you know, maybe you're using DHCP on your environment, which is, which is, um, which is you know, good because DHCP means that your uh, IP addresses are constantly changing. And some of these scanners are very sensitive <laughs> So, so you have to use agents instead. All right. Uh, some of the other things is start early. Okay. You know, you start early with a digital monetization um, plan. You know, this is just not something that you just walk in on Monday morning and say we're going to modernize this whole entire environment. It is a planning process. All right. So, so what you see with digital monetization is that digital monetization um, is here to help all of us out, okay? And, you know, when you think about the cybersecurity mode of thinking, it is the end state, okay? What is it that organization really want to foresee at the end? But to foresee that at the end, okay, um, you have to think through digital monetization, okay? Because the cybersecurity mode of thinking is to be adapted to think resilience. So when you build a digital modernization platform, you have to be resilient. Now, when you're resilient and you start to put all these different practices in place, this is where continuous improvement comes to process, okay? Comes to, comes to process the way that you should mature your enterprise, okay? So that means that, that you have found a way to make it resilient and scalable. Now understand that business operates within the same capacity as well because there are vendors, employers um, out there and these organizations are trying to protect their brand. All right. And, you know, with cybersecurity itself, right, there's, 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 there's kind of this, this idea is that corporations uh, spend a lot of time working through cybersecurity and providing service. But at the back end of the organization, the organization has to mature as well. All right. And there are some things that small businesses need to know when it comes to cybersecurity. All right. So, so in the next episode, I am going to be talking about cybersecurity for small businesses. What, do you need to know? All right. I'll see you in episode 10. You've been listening to the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast, where you have gained relevant knowledge to enhance your cybersecurity mindset. Be sure to visit DwayneHart.com to learn more about authored publications, show notes, and discover more information concerning cybersecurity.